thanks for watching this video. I'll start with the bonus shortcut first just to give you some motivation for learning these 7 shortcuts and that is that if you are switching from Jupyter Notebook to Colab or vice versa, these shortcuts are always going to be useful. The only difference is that for most of the shortcuts, Colab prepends a command M on a Mac or a control M on Windows. So effectively, if you learn these shortcuts, you should be able to use both Colab and Jupyter Notebooks. So let's get started. Number one, to run code cells, you can use either Shift Option or Control followed by Enter. Shift Enter allows you to run the cell and shift your focus to the next one. Option Enter allows you to run the cell and create a new cell below the current cell. And lastly, Control Enter will run the cell at the current position. So Shift is more for running code cells one by one in order. Option Enter is more for editing cells and Control Enter is more for editing a specific cell. Now for the next 5 shortcuts, I just want to point out that the command key is for Mac users and the control key is for Windows users. And the letters that you see after the commas, those are the single key keyboard shortcuts that you would use in a Jupyter Notebook. So number 2, to add cells, the shortcut is command M followed by A for above or B for below. So if I run this, and let's say I missed out a code cell above, I can just do command M A to add a cell above and just test something out here. Now another useful thing you might want to do is to change your cell type. And you can do that using command M M for markdown and command M Y for code cell. So we can change this to a markdown cell by command M M, press enter to edit the cell and then we can type our markdown. Click shift enter and to change it back, we press command M Y. Next, now that we can add cells, what if we make a mistake and we want to delete them? The shortcut for this would be command M D for delete. So if I press command M D and delete this cell, it's gone. What if you make a mistake, however, and we want to undo this, then we would simply press command M Z to undo the changes that we've made. So this is different from undoing within a code cell. Within a code cell, if you make a change to undo, you would just do your Ctrl Z or your Command Z as per normal. But outside a code cell, that would be Command M followed by Z. Number six keyboard shortcut is toggling line numbers. And this is useful when you're having a long block of code and you're trying to pinpoint where exactly the error is. So if you run the code cell and we get an error, it tells us the line number is 43, but we don't have the line numbers shown by default. So to do that, we will press Command M followed by L to toggle the line numbers and we can see the error was at line 43 and line 43 is here. It looks like it's a misspelling. Now we run the code cell, we get what we want. Last but not least, to run commands, we have two very useful symbols, the exclamation mark for single line bash commands and the percent percent symbol. So for the exclamation mark, we can use it to run single line bash commands, for example, to list the contents of the current directory, or you can also run it on multiple lines by creating a file and writing to it, and then looking at the contents. But you might find this a bit troublesome to have to type the exclamation mark every time you want to run a command. So there's a way around this, which is by using the magic commands, which is the percent percent symbol. So first of all, we can do percent percent bash to get a bash terminal and then we can type in the commands that we want line by line. So this will be useful when you're installing a list of packages, then you can just do percent percent bash instead of having to type the exclamation marks one by one. And last but not least, we have percent percent time which allows us to measure the time your cell takes to run. And you can imagine if you are using Google Colab for machine learning, then you can use percent percent time to measure how long it takes for your model to train. So those were the 7 shortcuts for Google Colab. Yes, there are other shortcuts that are specific to Colab, but those will be for a separate video. And if you're interested in Jupyter Notebook shortcuts, I have a couple of other videos you can check out to find out more as well. If you found this useful, do share it with anyone who might need it. And if you have any questions or comments, do leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.